Hello, um, this is my presentation for Theory 4, Spring 2020, and I will be presenting on the piece um, Chopin's Etude Number 8 in F. Um, Chopin wrote two big books of etudes, um, each of which contains 12 different etudes, uh, and then three extra ones that he wrote afterwards. The etude that I'm um, using for my analysis is the eighth etude of the first book. An etude is used by students to help learn uh, technique, and that is how Chopin intended these pieces to be used. He followed in the footsteps of Bach in writing 24 etudes, and they follow similar outline uh, in harmony as Bach's etudes do. Not exactly, but close enough. And uh, I read the dissertation of a piano scholar uh, called, named um, Andreas Klein. And uh, in her dissertation, the Chopin Etudes, an indispensable pedagogical tool for developing piano technique, she describes the history of these pieces, which includes uh, Chopin traveling around Europe and... Uh, premiering big pieces like his concerti and that kind of things. And it is assumed that these pieces arised out of him practicing for those bigger performances. Uh, she also says that um, unlike other etudes from um, big name piano composers of the time, these pieces were both technically useful, but also musically um, fulfilling for the people who performed them and listened to them and that these pieces are definitely not suitable for beginners. They are very difficult as far as piano repertoire goes. For the analysis of this piece, I want to think about it in terms of melody and harmony. Normally in an analysis, I would also include rhythm as an element that uh, worth analyzing, but in the case of this piece, it's almost constantly 16th notes uh, without, any, without much uh, rhythmic variation. So I will concentrate on melody and harmony. The melody of this piece to me is characterized in two main uh, sections, um, the right hand and the left hand, but also in different parts of the piece. In the right hand, the melody is built upon cells of four notes, four sixteenth notes. Um, and over the sp space of a measure, this cell will happen four different times on each beat, but in different octaves descending every sixteenth note. Typically, these cells are built with an arpeggio and one passing tone. Um, Andreas Klein specifically mentions the importance of the addition of these, these passing tones. These lines, uh, over the span of two measures, start at the top of the piano range, descend down all the way into the bass register, and then all the way back up. This 16th note melodic fragment happens throughout the entire piece. And later, it is expounded upon by having the left hand join in with these cell-based melodic fragments uh, with contrary motion where the left hand will go down and the right hand will go up, or vice versa. Those 16th notes, to me, are the most integral part of this piece. The other important part of the melody of this piece is the secondary melody that happens in the left hand at the beginning and the end of the piece. This melody is characterized by a strong bass note on the downbeat that jumps up by a sixth to resolve to the fifth of the chord. Uh, and then on the third quarter note of the measure uh, plays the third of the chord. This arpeggio sets up a very clear uh, expression of the harmony and is much more traditionally melodic than the fast half or 16th note cells in the right hand. Another way to put it is it's a lot more singable of a melody than um, what is happening in the right hand. The harmony of this piece falls into a larger form and structure of A, B, A. The A sections are in F major and the B section is in D minor. The transition from the first A section to the B section is a plagal sounding kind of transition that uses four, a four chord that resolves to a one chord that eventually sets up the first cadence of the piece. In the B section, um, also you could call it the development section when there's more interesting harmonies, 
there is a lot of descending dominant chords that are present. These de descending dominant chords take the same approach as augmented sixth chords, but are spelled differently. An interesting point in this piece is when in the key of D minor, uh, it uses a B dominant seven chord that resolves to a B flat dominant seven chord that resolves to an A dominant chord, which is five in D minor. That chord progression could be understood as augmented sixths, but in the context of this piece, it is spelled just as descending dominant chords. The last aspect of this piece I would like to discuss is actually something that I didn't understand until I started to do this presentation just barely. Um, there's a section of the 16th note cell-based uh, melody that uses the notes C, E, G, and B flat, or five and F, clearly a C dominant chord, that goes uh, chromatically up except for the C which goes up by a whole step to G sharp B F and D and this uh, G sharp fully diminished chord or a B fully diminished chord is acting like a seven of five so it's a secondary dominant that's being applied to the chord and it happens um, in this cell based melody where it transitions in and out of that five to five of five to five to five of five eventually cadencing to the final resolution of the piece. This kind of thing is characteristic of other secondary dominants in the piece as well that are uh, more clear um, than this one was.